Jeff Olson, Dan Foss Drives Training Coordinator. Today I'm going to do a video for you on how to set up the time base functions that are available in the FC 102 HVAC drive, FC 202 Aqua Drive, and also the FC 302 Automation Drive. So all three of the top tier drives have these functions available in them. I'm going to focus on using the available MCT10 setup wizard to program the scheduler here. So we're going to focus on, again, this timed actions wizard here. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. I have my MCT10 software open. I have a connected FC102 HVAC drive. I also have the live drive sitting here next to me that I am connected to in this keypad simulator is reflecting that drive right now so we can see what's going on there. This application, we're going to simulate a golf course irrigation application uh, simply because we have to choose something, for example. So we're going to go with that. The, what we'll be trying to accomplish will be to turn on and off a pump between the hours of 4.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock a.m. And during those run times, I will energize three different valves that will water zones A, B, and C. So we're going to have four total time-based events we're going to set up here. So let's get started. First, I'm going to move into the clock functions wizard. The clock functions wizard is going to let us set the date and time automatically with my PC. If you are connected on the network side, the live drive, you'll have this tab here for date and time. If you are not and you're working on the project side, you'll only see this working days tab. So you have to be connected to get this date and time tab. If you are and you see it, it'll allow you to set up the date and time automatically on the drive with your PC here. So you use this button here that says set time and date, and you go ahead and apply that, and it will use your PC to write the clock. Take a look at that, just make sure that that happens. So I'm gonna go into my main menu group for clock settings here, and I do see that this is now reflecting the accurate time and date. We can move on. The next tab in the clock function setup is working days. This will allow me to define what is a working day and a non-working day. Currently, Monday through Friday are considered working days, and Saturday and Sunday are non-working days. I could add one of these over here. I could choose a Wednesday, for example, in the middle of the month, particularly the, the, the 22nd, or a non-working day if we wanted to. So this does let you create a custom schedule of what you call a working day and non-working day. So we'll go ahead and apply that. We're just going to leave it pretty much default and jump into the timed actions wizard. Once we're in the timed action, actions wizard, this is where we're going to set up all of our events. We should notice that there are 10 total time-based actions that you can set up. Each one of them consists of an on action, an off action, an occurrence, and finally, an on and off time. So let's start out with our first action, which is going to be to start and stop this drive between the hours of 4.30 and 6 a.m. Now, we're going to assume that the basic drive programming has already been done. It has been configured with proper motor data, uh, possibly in a closed loop configuration with a set point entered, a pipe fill mode uh, at first startup in the morning. So that's all been done. This is just going to tell the drive when to turn on and off and control these zones. So let's get going here. Our first on action, I have selected the value run. I want to point out here that there's a lot of things that you can do with this other than just starting and stopping the drive. I can change preset speeds, change setups, ramps, direction. So a lot of different things I can control here. We see these settings here, setting an output high and low. That is turning a physical output on and off. So we're going to do that in the next event. So let's finish up with the first one here. My on action will be to run. My off action will be to stop. I will point out that if I hit the S key, for example, it'll jump to all the values that begin with S. So that can be helpful to get to the right value. My occurrence here, this is where I can select working days, non-working days, any particular day of the week, or in this case, we're going to go ahead and go with all days. 
the working days and non-working days would of course coincide with what I set up previously in this working days tab. So we're gonna go ahead and say all days. My on time here will be 4.30 a.m. And my off time, 6 o'clock a.m. So that's an hour and a half of total run time. And we move on to our second event. This is where I wanna control zone A or turn it on. To do that, to control outputs on the drive, we use these selections here. Set digital output A high. Setting an output high is the same thing as saying to turn it on or activate the output. We'll later define what is actually output A, B, C, and so on. For now we're gonna say set output A high. The off action will be to set that output low or turn it off. That'll be again, zone one. The occurrence will be all days, and this is going to happen from 4.31 a.m., so one minute after the drive powers up. We'll assume it takes about that, or I'm sorry, after the drive starts in the morning. It'll take about a minute for it to get up to pressure, and then zone A will be energized and open. We'll run that until 5 o'clock a.m., so we have 29 minutes of runtime on that zone. The valve will shut off at this time because it's associated with my off action. And then we move on. So zone A has came on and watered for 29 minutes, and now we move on to B. Set digital output B high. Set B low, so turn it on, turn it off, all days. Right here we'll go a minute after the last valve closed, 5.01 a.m. up until 5.30. And I finish up with the final zone C. I am turning that output high, low, from 5.31 a.m. up until 6 o'clock a.m. So I have an hour and a half of runtime, and that is split between the three zones. I have to go and click this apply button that will appear here, and now that will be written to the drive. So this has been set and written into the drive. I'm going to pull up my keypad simulator here. I have set it to display the actual time of day. To do that, you'll actually do it in the zero parameter groups. You set the clock in this parameter here, 070. Of course, I've already done it with the MCT-10 wizard. And if I want to display that clock, you'll do that in this group right here, 0-2 LCP display. And I currently have large line three to show the date and time readout, which is why we see it here. This drive is currently in a standby state. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and force this drive to show a time of 4.29 a.m. Therefore, we can wait approximately one minute and we'll see something happen, hopefully. So let's go in there and do that. I'm gonna go back to the time clock and set it for 4.29. Okay, that's done. So one minute later at 4.30, we should notice that the drive goes into a run state. It currently has an 85% speed reference, so I'd, I'd expect for us to see that. Go ahead and minimize this stuff here, and we'll wait and see what happens. There's 4.30, and we see that the drive uh, started up all on its own right there, and of course it'll stop at 6 o'clock a.m. and all the other events will uh, happen in between. So there you have it, time-based events. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call one 888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website 
at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.